Hey everybody, my name's Ryan and here at eTrailer we install, test fit, and review a lot of different parts. That way we can try to answer any questions those of you might have. And that's exactly what we're doing today on our 2019 GMC Acadia. We're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms. So there's going to be a total of five main components needed to flat tow your Acadia down the road. First one's going to be your base plate. A base plate is going to be that solid connection point on our vehicle. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. A tow bar is the second component. This is actually going to be the main link that connects the front of your Acadia to the back of your motorhome. The third main component is going to be safety cables. And these are going to be there in the event of a unlikely disconnect. These are going to keep your Acadia connected to your motorhome. The fourth main component is going to be tow bar wiring. The wiring is going to transfer your lighting functions from the back of your motorhome to the back of your Acadia, keeping you safe and legal. And last but not least, the fifth main component is going to be your braking system. The braking system is going to apply the brakes in your Acadia whenever you apply the brakes in your motorhome. And that's gonna help bring you to a safe and predictable stop. So this is what the base plate is going to look like whenever you're not hooked up to your motorhome and you're just cruising around town. Now I will say it is visible, but in my opinion, it really isn't that much of an eyesore. Everything is relatively close together and easy to get to and just kind of has a organized look to it. So the base plate is going to have a black powder coat finish, which should keep it in really good shape for a long time. And Blue Ox even went a step further and included these little plugs here. That way when you're not using it, you can put these in there. Not only does it kind of clean up the look of it, but that's gonna prevent any dirt and debris and moisture from getting inside. That way you won't get hung up in the future when you do go to hook up to your motorhome. I do kind of like that the safety chain hooks come out a little bit further. That makes them really easy to get to and hook everything up. And another small thing, but important in my opinion, is the fact that the base plate comes with some brackets and gives you the ability to mount up your wiring connector as well as your braking system breakaway switch here. So not a huge deal, but those small things make life a lot easier when you go to hook up and get everything installed. And whenever you are ready to hook up to your motorhome, it's gonna be super simple and straightforward. And that's because the kit uses these removable arms. So when you're ready, you just pull your plugs out, take your removable arm, kind of push it in, rotate it a quarter turn until it locks into position. From there, you would just hook your tow bar up to it. And when you're done, it's just as easy to remove. Pull the pin, rotate it, and pop them out. I do like the fact that these are relatively small in size. So when you are ready to store these away, not a huge deal. They're not gonna take up a ton of space. Now this base plate is going to work with most Blue Ox tow bars like we have here today on our vehicle. However, if those tow bars don't pique your interest or you happen to have a different brand of tow bar already. The good news is there's many different types of adapters available that will allow you to pair that particular tow bar with this base plate. And if that's your case, you can pick those up right here at eTrailer. Now, one thing I do want to mention is the use of a high-low adapter, which is this right here. Now, I say that because you want everything to ride nice and level as you're going down the road, like ours is set up here. And a lot of times what can happen is the motorhome's hitch sits higher than the attachment point here on our base plate. And to get everything nice and level, a good rule of thumb is you want these attachment points to be within three inches of each other. So just to give you an idea, from the ground to the center of our pinhole here, that's about 15 and one quarter of an inch. So you would take that measurement measure the center of your hitch pin hole on your motorhome 
and you want to find that difference. Like I said, you want it to be within three inches. So if you're above or below, you would need a high-low adapter. And we offer many different sizes right here at each trailer, and that's where you can pick them up. So at the end of the day, base plate you really can't go wrong with. Not only is it going to look pretty good, but it's going to provide us with that solid and reliable connection point that we need to get everything hooked up. Now as far as the installation goes, I'm not going to lie, it is relatively involved. You do have to remove the front fascia and do some trimming, but once all that's out of the way, everything's pretty easy to get to. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and do that together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be here at the front of our Arcadia. We're going to need to remove the fascia. So first thing you want to do is pop the hood and that'll give us access to seven fasteners that we need to pull out right here behind this front edge. So there's going to be a total of seven of them. This one here on this edge on the passenger side is going to be kind of hidden behind this weather stripping. But we'll take our T15 Torx bit and get all of these removed. So now what we can do is move to our front wheel well. And on the front edge, we're gonna have a total of four T15 fasteners that we need to pull out. Now, whenever you're doing this, sometimes it helps to kind of turn your tires one way or the other. Kind of gives you a little bit more room to work. Once I have this last one out, I'll repeat the same process on the other side of our Arcadia. So now what I went ahead and did is just take some painter's tape here, just kind of put it along the edges because we're getting ready to pull this off and I don't want to potentially scratch our paint up. So that being said, we can remove this plastic piece of trim here. This is pretty straightforward. You kind of just grab on it and pull it out towards you and work it up. Now, you only need to go up as far as where our quarter panel meets our front fascia, so right here in this area. So we don't really need to worry about removing. Now what we're able to do is kind of grab our wheel well liner, kind of just tuck that out of the way. And if we look, right here where our quarter panel meets our fascia, we're gonna see a fastener and we need to pull it out. And so I'm gonna use a seven millimeter to remove that. With this removed, I'll simply repeat the same process over on the other side. Now underneath our car, just in front of our front tire, we're gonna have three seven millimeter bolts along this edge here that we need to pull out. And once I get these removed, going to repeat the same process over on the other side. This piece of plastic will drop down and we can just set this off to the side. Then we're gonna have two more seven millimeters right here and here on each side of our vehicle. So we'll go ahead and get all those pulled out as well. And then in the center here underneath our car, we're gonna have three more seven millimeters that we'll pull out as well. And then on each side towards the center here, we're gonna have one more seven millimeter bolt. So grab my socket and get those out as well. So before we remove our fascia, if you notice, if you just kind of pull on it here, it's connected to this piece of weather stripping, so we don't want to get hung up on that. So what we're going to do, it's actually split right there. So you can just separate that and kind of pull forward. You can see that weather stripping is going to release from them clips, and that way it won't hang us up when we go to pull us off. Now with an extra set of hands, we can actually remove our fascia. So what you want to do is start on the corners here, and you're just going to kind of carefully pop it towards you and that's going to release the clip sets holding it on. So kind of just work your way towards the center and it comes off relatively easy. Now pay attention because you may have some electrical connectors here 
And to get that removed, you can push up on that red tab. And once you have that red tab pushed back, you can simply just push down on the white lever and that will separate the connector. Now that we have everything disconnected, we can take our fascia and set it off to the side somewhere safe. Now what we can do is trim up some of our plastic air dam here, and that'll give us clearance for the base plate. So I went ahead and just kind of marked the spots that we're gonna cut. And this is relatively thin plastic, so I'm just gonna use a pair of 10 snips to get that material removed. There is a diagram in your instructions, so you can always refer to that as well to find the areas that you need to cut out. And then I'll just do the same thing over here on the passenger side. So before we put our base plate up, I just want to mention the attachment point that we're gonna to use to keep it secure for the time being. So underneath our frame rail, you can see there's gonna be a factory drilled hole right there. And that's the hole that we're gonna to use to put our hardware through. So our base plate will sit up flat against here. The hole in the base plate will line up with it. And then we're able to get our hardware in. So what I suggest doing is taking the handle nut and kind of pre-bending it because the way this is gonna work is that's actually gonna go through this factory opening here in our bumper beam. That's gonna go inside and then that's going to line up with that factory hole there. So that's how the nut is going to be inside of the frame. And the bolt that we're gonna use I'm just going to take a hex bolt and a split lock washer. Once our base plate's up, that's actually going to thread into that handle nut. And I want to mention too, from this point on, anything we do to one side of our vehicle, we're also going to do to the other side to be set up the same way. And all of the hardware that is going to secure the base plate, you want to use some red Loctite on all the threads. So I do suggest kind of getting this ready and having everything somewhat in order before we hold our base plate up because it'll make it a lot easier. Now with an extra set of hands, we can take our base plate, slide it in a position. Over here on the passenger side, it's gonna have an opening that allows us to kind of go around this hose. And once we get it lined up, you can kind of hold it steady. and get our hardware started. So once you get these started by hand, we can come back with a socket and just snug them down for now. Now that we have our base plate snug, we can prepare our other attachment point. So this hole here in the base plate, we're gonna use as a guide to drill a hole and through the frame. That way we can get some more hardware in it. Once we have that hole made, what we're going to do is use the same hardware combination that we used up here. So we'll bend our handle nut, put it in, through the frame rail, take our hex bolt and our split lock washer, put some Loctite and get it started. So once you have each side in place and hand tight, again, we're going to come back and just snug everything down. Now what we can do, if you look on the side of our base plate here, we're gonna have two holes that line up with the pinch weld on our frame. And we're gonna use these holes as guides to drill holes through the frame there. That way we can get some hardware in. With both of those holes drilled out, now we can take our hardware, which will be hex bolts with split lock washers. Run them through. So here's the back side where our bolts come through. We're just gonna take a nylon lock nut, 
get those started and tight. And then I'll just come back with a socket and a wrench and snug them down. Now just over here on the passenger side where our hose kind of runs through our base plate, what we're gonna do is take this bracket and put it in place. So that's gonna line up with those two holes. You can take your hex bolts, split lock washers, run those through. So where our bolts pass through, just take our nylon lock nuts, get both of them going hand tight. And once we have them on, again, we can come back with a wrench and a socket and snug everything down. So now we're able to grab our brace and attach it to the side of our base plate. Now these braces are side specific, so be sure to check the diagram and your instructions to make sure you have the right one. The way these are gonna work, these two holes here are gonna line up with these two holes in the base plate. We can take a hex bolt, a split lock washer, push that through. Same deal for this one here. So here's where our bolts come through. We're gonna take our nylon lock nuts and we just wanna get these started hand tight for now. So then what we're gonna do is take our U-bolt, run it behind this brace here. And what's gonna happen is the ends of our U-bolts are gonna pass through those ends there on that bracket. And on each end, what we can do is take a flat washer, and a nylon lock nut. We're gonna get these started hand tight as well. So with all of that hardware in place, we can now come back and snug up these two bolts first. And then we can start to tighten down the nuts here on our U-bolt. Now whenever you tighten these down, you want to run them down evenly. That way the U-bolt will draw up at the same time and keep everything nice and flush and secure. Now that we have all of our hardware in place and snugged up, we can come back with a torque wrench and tighten everything down to the amount specified in our instructions. So once you have all the hardware on your base plate torqued, you can install these safety cables, which I went ahead and done. These are pretty straightforward. You just use the D-link and run it through this circle opening here inside of your base plate. So you take your cable and wrap it around the frame of your vehicle. So here's how mine turned out. And what I like to do once I have it in place is just take some zip ties and kind of tighten everything together. That way this won't bounce around when you're going down the road and make a bunch of noise. And then you can move up here to your bumper where our handle nuts are coming out and you can trim off that extra, that way it won't be in the way. Now at this point, it would be a great opportunity to install any other flat toe components you may need, like wiring or a braking system, for example, and that's because we're gonna have all this extra room to work, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. However, if those are already installed or you're not going to be installing them, what you could do is hold your fascia up and kind of mark where you're gonna to need to trim to allow your base plate to come through. And what I've done just to keep everything uniform is put some marks on here and I'm just gonna cut this whole little square section out. This is somewhat thin plastic so you can use a Dremel tool, a sharp utility knife possibly, or a pair of snips like this to get everything trimmed out. So once your fascia is trimmed out, you can simply put it back on the front of your Acadia 
and reinstall it the opposite way that you removed it. Now I do want to point out, I did have to trim out a little bit more material. Most of our components come out right at the very bottom edge of the grill. So I do suggest cutting these almost flush with the very bottom. That'll give you a little bit more room and make it not as tight and a little bit easier to snap your fascia back into position. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms on our 2019 GMC Acadia.